One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, I love counting. Whatever the amount. Of Hello, everybody. It's the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to April's rendition of Ten for Twelve. If you don't know what my segment Ten for Twelve is, please check out the past episodes in the box below. So, as I promised in last month's episode, today we're going to talk about my top ten animated shows that should become full-length films animated or live action and who should direct them merely because of the fact that we have reached an age where cartoons especially from the 80s are coming to life every which way and let's not forget the whole Marvel and DC craze that is sweeping the world all the way from X-Men to the Avengers today so of course I'm going to do as I always do 10 animated series selected by me these are the ones that I really feel can make great movies, and who is the right director for the fitting of this project? So, number 10. We have to go with Pinky and the Brain. Two little lab mice with a mission to take over the world. You know the show, you love the characters, and who better to direct it than the brainchild of Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain himself, Steven Spielberg. He'll direct it, he'll have the writers with him, he'll probably create one of the most hysterical and intelligent animated or live-action films ever created. Number nine, I want to give it to an iconic superhero that really has seemed to have vanished, and I'm talking about Mighty Mouse. The tiny mouse with the superpowers to face the forces of evil and give us a better world. Who better to direct a story like Mighty Mouse than Brad Bird? He has given us great work from the Iron Giant to the Incredibles to Rat Tattooey, a guy that can blend a great action and comedic and heartwarming story, especially when it comes to the area of superheroes and rodents. Number eight is one of the most underappreciated Hanna-Barbera series ever created, and it was just awesome, in-your-face, and in full of action, and that is SWAT Cats The Radical Squadron. Two ordinary cat mechanics that are a little more than meets the eye. I'm sorry about the Transformers pun there, but it is true. And these guys just decide to become vigilantes of the skies and punish the forces of evil where the forces of good just can't seem to get the job done. And as far as someone who can direct this movie, I would have to give it to Brian Singer. While he has given us great projects like X-Men, I really feel that he could give us that perfect blend of action and fantasy together, even when it comes to a show like SWAT Cats. And if you've seen this show, it's not necessarily entirely kid-friendly. There are some intense action sequences and some really great moments in the show. Number seven, I give it to a cartoon that has been talked about for a while now, but still has yet to reach the theaters, and it's Johnny Quest, the story of a boy who goes on world excavations and adventures with his father, his friend Haji, and their bodyguard, race. They've been talking about it, but it still has yet to show up in theaters, and I really feel that this could be an excellent movie, possibly a chain of movies. And I feel that the person that can really do a good job with it is Steven Sommers. He's done great work with The Mummy, which is a nice blend of action and humor alongside a great global adventure, and that's what Johnny Quest is all about. I think that Steven Sommers can really bring good light to Johnny Quest, especially when I saw that even though G.I. Joe wasn't a great movie, he did a good job with it, and it was fun, and I think that Johnny Quest can be a fun movie. Number six, I give it to an old, underrated, and unknown favorite, Mighty Max. The story of a boy who is chosen to wear a cap that portals him all across the globe to punish the forces of evil, to prevent them from conquering the world. He has a bodyguard from Norway and a ancient fowl that knows everything about the world and how it works. And when it comes to a story about global scaling and adventure, especially when it, there's youth involved, I take a look at John Turtle Traub and his work with National Treasure. That's a guy who can really take Mighty Max and turn it into a great movie. Possibly a chain of movies, merely because of the fact that the show was fantastic and had a great story, and I feel that he's the best director for the job. Number five, I give it to something for the ladies, Rainbow Bright. It was a phenomenon in the 1980s, and it's a great story about children really being heroes and heroines, and a girl whose mission is to bring color and life to the world. 
If there's one director that I feel can really turn Rainbow Bright into a great film, because if you've actually seen the episode Beginning of Rainbow Land, I did, it was quite intense and pretty scary, because Rainbow Land was not always full of color. Alfonso Curian, I bring back Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. His way of filming is he really knows how to make the center of the film revolve around children, and he turns children into these mythic, incredible figures in the film. And I feel that he is the right guy that can really take these children and turn them into those iconic heroes and heroines in a Rainbow Bright film. Number four, now we're getting into the real nitty-gritty about f characters and cartoons that I'm sure you all want to see. Let's talk about Thundercats. Thundercats is a great series from the 1980s. The Bruce Timm work from recently was even better, and I feel that this could be a fantastic grouping of movies, but who to direct it? I have to say Zack Snyder. I've seen his work with 300 and Watchmen. I just feel that in the way that he makes a film can really turn Thundercats into a awesome movie series. Let's go to number three, He-Man Masters of the Universe. Let's forget that that one with Dolph Lundgren actually existed in the 1980s, shall we? I know that there are rumors that the Wachowskis have the rights alongside Joe Silver, and I think that they could turn this into a great series of films as well. I mean, I really enjoyed the series that came out in 2002 where they removed the camp and just turned it into a really serious action epic, and I feel that they could do it because they've done wonders with The Matrix and even for family orientation with Speed Racer. I think that He-Man should come back to the big screen the way it was intended based on the animated series, and I think that the Wachowskis would be the perfect people to direct it. Number two, the Jetsons. The Flintstones and Scooby-Doo and other various Hanna-Barbera cartoons have already gotten to the big screen. But where are the Jetsons? The time is now. The time is right. America's family that's truly ahead of its time needs to be on the big screen. Also, this is only based on rumors. Robert Rodriguez has his hat in the ring to direct this supposed live-action Jetsons film. He is the perfect choice for that movie. He may have movies like Sin City and Desperado under his belt, but let's take a look at Spy Kids. Crazy action and fantasy like you've never believed. The Jetsons have that style of kooky fantasy and science fiction feel to them. And if Robert Rodriguez, in fact, is the guy to direct a Jetsons live-action film, heaven help me, I am going to be so thrilled and just ready to see that movie when it hits theaters. Number one, Invader Zim. A cult classic, ingenious, way ahead of its time. Not for kids, but great, fun, hysterical action-adventure comedy. Guillermo del Toro has actually said to a friend of mine who went to see him at a book signing that he has been trying to call Jonan Vasquez and ask him, can I please turn Invader Zim into a movie? Jonan, if you are ever gonna watch this, please say yes. Especially if you wanna make it animated. He produced Rise of the Guardians, which is a phenomenal film, and I think that if you give him the chance to turn Invader Zim into an animated movie or a live action movie, he will bring you box office gold. That's it, everybody. I'd like your thoughts on what I've talked about. I'd also like your suggestions on other television series that you think would make great movies. Even if they've already hit the theaters, if you think they should be redone. So that's it, guys. And on that note, I'm going to let you know that May's 10 for 12 is a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you want to guess, you're more than welcome to leave your comments in the box below. Thank you very much, and as always, actions speak louder than words.